but with Vlad the Impaler too. So the uh, armor upgrades uh, did all right, although it didn't get a chance to face any of those spinners to really test it. But the uh, the steel corner blocks and big screws seemed to uh, hold it together, and it was a lot faster to get the lid on and off with the uh, 20 fasteners instead of the I don't know, 45 or so it was before. Hmm. So got a few new cuts and gouges on the lid. These are quite nice. And there's this uh, big slice here and this slightly smaller slice here, which will come into play later. Let's see what's inside. The, uh, the shortcut on the lid was pretty much right above this box. And if, yeah, if I can zoom in kind of closer, you can see this, uh, this scrape there and there, right by the uh, steady sticker. Those were the scrapes from the blade. And if I hold the camera still and just open the box, you see that would have clut uh, right, <laughs> right there, which uh, pretty much would have shut us down. So that was um, maybe a quarter inch or uh, six millimeters for our metric friends away from winning the match. Very impressive. Uh, if that saw blade had been torqued down on Gloomsday and didn't bog down and stop when it hit the lid, um, that would have been a clean win. It's not going to be easy to get off. <sighs> He's still in there. <laughs> and the ears are still attached. Let's see if the lid comes off. So the internals were a pair of T74s with the tie rod conversion, a Waihachi switch, and a Robotech AX2550. And more on that later. It was running a Hobby King um, $17 pistol radio. And I think it was maybe the only robot still running sealed lead acid batteries. I think these are the Mocker brand <laughs> and uh, 18 amp hour rated. So we were running three of those in series, 436 nominal. That was. <sighs> Let's see if the bunny will come out. Oh, poor ears. <laughs> They're covered in metal shavings. Huh, well that's uh that's not polycarbonate. But it is polycarbonate. Uh, you need the jaws of life to get the bunny out of the Yeah, it's probably easier the other way. 
okay, okay, fine, fine. Jaws, jaws of life. Where did, where did I put the crowbar? Bring in the rescue crew. Okay, buddy. Just bend the crowbar. Over freight. There. Now let's try for bunny extraction. And the bunny is still standing. Well, well, super fluffy. I think you live again to fight next year. But I think your sparkly pink battle tank is uh, not gonna make it. So in our first match against the Resurrection, um, pretty early on into that match, the forward direction of, I believe, this wheel burnt out. And I plan to pull that out and uh, we'll take a look at the FETs. And then I had to drive backwards for the rest of the match. Um, I guess I was just able to show a little more aggression and um, got the win. It's a great bunch of guys from Colorado. I think they were uh, just incredibly happy to be there and uh, did pretty well for a, a rookie robot and all. So, uh, Second match was versus the Toro Maximus, and I think I was doing all right for the first maybe uh, 10 or 20 seconds. Um, but then as soon as I backed off of him for like half a click, uh, he managed to pivot in and put a nice little ding on the wedge. And after that, I was just never able to get under him, and the match was pretty much... Um, I'm sure there, there are definitely videos on the YouTube that do it better justice than my explanation. Congratulations, Toro Maximus. And we took this thing back to the pit table and uh, saw that we really didn't have a whole lot of repair to do. Uh, the, the quarter of the motor controller that was burnt out was still burnt out, but no more. Uh, the one gearbox was uh, a little crunchy, but still worked. Um, one of the mount, another one of the mount holes, leaving us only two now, had cracked. Um, but all in all, everything still ran. Uh, these chunks of metal here and on the companion side uh, were uh, bent in and wedged into the tire. I think this one was has a nice deep gouge from where that piece just dug right in and stuck. So, uh, we uh, assessed the damage, saw that it wasn't too bad, called it a night uh, with, with the intention of coming in in the morning and fixing it. Um, I stopped off here at the warehouse heading in that day and picked up my spare uh, Robotech. So if I wanted to replace that, it was possible. Uh, I never ended up doing that just because I'm lazy. Uh, but uh, hacked off the extra pieces of steel just with an angle grinder in the morning and we were ready to go again against Gloomsday. And uh, in that match, I was just simply outdriven. Um, that robot is a total sleeper. It, uh, it looks very retro and old school along with the team, but uh, it, the drivetrain packs a punch they're using great old motors that are uh, kind of a long lost secret at this point, I guess. Um, but uh, the saw definitely had uh, <laughs> the power as, uh, as we can see with that guy, but um, they used their fancy diamond blade on the steel body and that was certainly the right choice. It put a lot of scratches and cuts in there. That one's, that one's actually pretty deep. Um, but uh, th this robot is pretty well 
um, suited to fight that design as it has the, the kind of diamond shape. So as they pointed out, I was kind of able to spin out and um, escape from their grasps uh, for the majority of the match. But when they were able to, to pin and uh, bring the saw to bear, it definitely did, the, did a number. Okay, so just to hammer home the point, I uh, opened up my older tech from the uh, 2011 mini fridge. So this is the new unit. It's the okay, it's on the front. End. Okay, there it is. Robotech 2550 80 amp 120 max model 2550. It actually doesn't have the rating. So this is from the mini fridge. You can see that is the bank of fets that blew out. But it is two fets per leg. That's the good side. So this is the more modern unit. You can see it is one fet per leg. And the diode that caused it to stop uh, responding in one direction. I'm fairly sure that if I solder that back in, it'd probably just work. But, uh, so this, I think, is, is one of the main reasons why they've had such a spotty record, these ESCs, is because even though they look identical from the outside, they function identically as far as uh, the computer program and the driver knows, but they have at least two, maybe Four or five revisions. Let's see which one is this. Uh, PCB 9.1. So <laughs> there's at least nine different revisions out there. As you can see, these boards have provisions. Actually, this one's probably a little easier to see. It actually has full provisions for the four fets per leg, and these um, these planes here are meant to get built up with. Um, like 12 gauge solid copper and flowed solder. Uh, so they still have the uh, provisions for doing the high amp controller. They just don't, I guess, uh, unless you're willing to pay for it. So uh, this is lesson. Uh, whenever you buy one of these things, open it up and see what's inside. Because uh, this is, well, this is bad. This is bad too. You know, this, this is middleweight capable, this is, I don't, I, I, I would have trouble running this on lightweight. Uh, this is capable of middleweight, and then the one with the four fets per leg is good enough for a heavyweight. But, uh, like Forrest Gump says, you never know what's inside a box of chocolates or something like that. Preto out!